My name's Lorette Folks, I'm a consultant histopathologist. If you find that you've got a lump, for example, in your breast or just not feeling quite right and you've had imaging and they find that there's a mass growing in your body, the clinicians might have an idea roughly about what it might be, but you don't necessarily know for sure what it is, so it has to have a biopsy. Most people know what a biopsy is. Most patients don't know what's happened, what happens to it once it has been taken. Often they, the surgeon will present them with the result and I don't think they probably think how that result has been has come about. My name is Sarah and I'm an advanced biomedical support worker. Uh, when the biopsy arrives, if it's a urgent specimen, we might prioritise it um, and then we book it in. You learn a lot about anatomy and that's what I find really interesting. My name is Abed Arnu. I'm a consultant histopathologist working at St. George's Hospital. If you follow me here, I'll show you. Once all these specimens are checked in, in the reception, they all come here to the cut-up room. You can have biopsies, you can have excisions, small excisions, or you can have big resections. Consultants cannot really do everything. So what we do is we train biomedical scientists to dissect some small specimens that may not be cancerous. Pathology is a challenging job, you know. It's a job that, uh, that, that, that based on your, and what you say, you are really helping the patient. My name is Sarah and I'm a BMS dissector. I cut up category B and Z specimens. So that means that they are smaller specimens that BMS dissectors have recently been trained to do. Normally pathologists used to do that in the past, but um, they're training by medical scientists at certain levels to do it now and we measure them and then we um, slice them and, and usually we embed most of the material into cassettes. Every day I have to ask a question. You know, I've been doing this for almost two years and I'm about to sit my exam, but I'm always learning. My name is Marius Azhari and I'm a specialist by medical scientist. Once the tissues uh, have been dissected, then they go into processing. And what that means is any water content in those tissues uh, is removed and is replaced by wax under high pressure. And this is what processing does. It removes water content from the tissue and impregnates it with wax. Once the tissues have been removed from the processor, here is the, a cassette that contains a uh, processed tissue. And you can see the water content has been removed and it's very hard. So what I do is I get a metal mold, just like this one. I put a bit of molten paraffin wax and leave it on the cold plate to cool down one that I've left earlier, you can see that the wax has hardened and this is the end result. It's, uh, this is what we call embedding. The tissue is embedded inside the hard wax and that protects the tissue and it covers it and uh, preserves it in that state. I obviously enjoy science and uh, enjoy the human pathology and uh, I think this is as uh, close as it gets to uh, dealing with human tissue. My name is Evangelos Kariankidis. I'm a biomedical scientist. So the sample arrives in a, a wax block. So once it comes here, what we do is uh, we have to slice it into very thin sections, we call them. Um, these sections tend to be about three microns. And basically, you just turn the handle and it, it, it moves up and down through the blades and, and you get slices of wax uh, with tissue in it. This is like a razor blade, and so we're cutting here, you know, the thickness of here, but smaller than that. So this has to be very thin because you want to be able to see through it at some point, so, um, which you'll see in the next stage. You do help a lot of people, and it's a very satisfying way of, of doing something. Each block is important to somebody, like each tissue that comes in and basically geared to get that to done as fast as possible because people are waiting for results. Hi, my name is Penel and I'm a biomedical scientist. So when we collected about two or three racks, we load them onto the staining machine. We do a simple staining. The samples need to be stained because we need to see the tissue cells under the microscope and it's more visible. The end product would be like this. So you can see different shades of pink and purple. I'm Sadia, I'm an advanced practitioner. So at this stage of quality control, we're making sure that what's on the slide matches what's on the form. 
quality control is making sure that section is of good quality, the staining is of good quality. We have to make sure that what's actually on the slide is representing the patient. Once the case has been checked out by us, it will then get released to the consultant. So the flies that have been made in the laboratory are picked up by consultants and then we have a look at them on the microscope here to diagnose the disease. So actually, clinically, the, the dermatologist thought it was a BCC, but um, she's not absolutely sure. It could, it could be a melanoma or it could be something else. And so she's taken, they've cut it out and then they sent it to us to um, be absolutely sure. So I'll confirm, yes, this is a basal cell carcinoma. And then my job is to then tell her what type of basal cell carcinoma, because different cancers can be not very aggressive or very aggressive. So our job is to tell them whether it is aggressive or not and whether they've cut it all out. It's a sort of a detective job, really. Sometimes you can spend three hours on one case mm -hmm. because one case could have up to 50, 60 slides. You've got to work through all of those and, and then write a report. So that can take three hours, whereas something like this can just take a few minutes. The final stage of the biopsy journey is when you hear back your results. So I hope the next time you have a biopsy you remember all the people involved in producing that report.